If you are new to comics, it can be a bit overwhelming, whether it be a new DC or Marvel comics reader, especially with these shared universes that have upwards of 60, 80 years of continuity that you have to kind of uh, get through. So we are going to we are here to help you out to navigate the waters specifically of Marvel today. We will be returned with a with a video on DC comics and where to start there. So I do have my good friends from the retrospective videos. First up, we have award-winning comic book editor, comic writer. For such a young man, he's read more comic books than he probably should have. We've got Joe Corral. How you doing, Joe? <laughs> I'm all right. Wes, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. And next up, we have Eric Bree. He has been a lifelong comic book reader. He's been reading comic books longer than I've been alive, and I'm not a young man. I'm in my <laughs> mid-40s. Bree, so you've been reading comic <laughs> books for almost 50 years. Yes. Yes, son, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the two best people that I can think of to kind of talk about where to start with Marvel Comics. Obviously, where you want to start is all going to depend on what you want to get out of Marvel Comics. It might be you want a certain era or these are the kind of heroes or stories that you like. That's all going to determine where to start. So we're going to try and give you the best starting points that we can find within the Marvel Universe. And we're even going to break it down by some teams and characters that are at the end. Obviously, the number one place that you would want to start, Fantastic Four number one, that's really the beginning and genesis of modern Marvel comics as we know them. That's where a lot of the villains and, I don't know, universes that were introduced and they're playing in to this day started. If someone's looking to jump in with the Silver Age, they're a bit pricey, but the Folio Society has put together a few books that are curated by Roy Thomas that reprint several key issues of Silver Age Marvel Comics, and it includes a facsimile edition of Fantastic Four number one that Wes just mentioned earlier. So you get to read it ads and everything, and it includes classic stories from, you know, Avengers number four with the first uh, appearance of uh, Cap uh, coming back for the Silver Age, Spider-Man no more. It's got uh, the first appearance of the Vision, you know, Iron Man, uh, lots of stuff in there. So if you want like a, a book that you can pick up that has uh, a bunch of key uh, Silver Age uh, issues, that's another uh, great place to look as well. So if you go back to that Silver Age time in Marvel Comics, and I say, you know, Fantastic Four, because that's really the genesis of mm -hmm. what Marvel Comics are. But within the next several years within Marvel Comics, you're going to get Avengers. You're going to get X-Men. You're going to finally get Thor break out into his own book. Same thing with Iron Man and Spider-Man as well. So all within that, around that time period right there, but that's kind of when they all come to the forefront and the, the universe itself starts, starts getting fleshed out. So Silver Age Marvel is a great place to start. Great, obviously that's where a lot of the comic books you would have read in your formative days would have been. Would have been. We were in the Bronze Age when I started, but if you could find a place that had back issues in the mid seventies, you, you had access to them. And that, that's what I ended up doing. That's how I got a lot of the, yeah, that's how I read all the back issues of, of these books. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the most famous times in Marvel Comics history, obviously, the very beginning when you had Stan and Jack and, and that kind of crew were essentially behind almost everything at Marvel. If we jump to the Jim Shooter era, uh, Joe, that's another good time. This is probably the best creative time mm -hmm. in Marvel Comics history. We've got the mm -hmm. Daredevil run from, from Fake Miller going on. We've got a uh, fantastic Spider-Man run going on. There are so many things happening at the same time. Obviously, the John Byrne Fantastic Four that uh, Breen is talking about there, Chris Claremont's X-Men. So if there's another time period, if you just want to be a Marvel reader, you can go to that Jim Shooter era. Where do you think specifically they should start with that so you can really get five of the ten greatest comic runs of all time essentially happen simultaneously? I, I think anyone interested in Daredevil uh, picking up uh, you can pick up the Born Again trade. It's been uh, printed and reprinted uh, over and over again. But, uh, you know, starting, um, was it around, uh, was it 227, 228 in that area? That is uh, that is uh, fantastic. It's uh, David uh, Mazzucchelli art. If you're interested in that character, perfect. The Roger Stern Spider-Man run, fantastic. It starts in Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, so you you would be starting with you know spectacular Spider-Man uh, number forty three. It's it's an amazing run. People still go back to it. People reference it all the time. Um, you have uh, Walt Simonson's Thor run starting at Thor 
was it 337 mm -hmm. was the first beta ray bill uh that's a, a fantastic place uh to come in and uh even with x-men um you could start if, if you're not starting with um giant size x-men number one you could start uh, around um you know uncanny uh 210 which is mutant massacre uh that's the first big x-men event and um you, you could dive right in there uh just like you know wes was saying like this this was a, a big moment in you know marvel comics jim shooter at the helm and then with characters like iron man you have uh stark wars uh you know also people refer to it as uh armor wars and and that is again a fantastic event um and, and a lot of these things are available in you know epic collections and and things like that as well so they're pretty easy uh, to get a hold of captain america uh 247 the first roger stern john byrne and that you can get in there's an epic collection dawn's early light that has that whole run of the two together and starts the very beginnings of another very celebrated run uh with that character with jm dimatteis and mike zeck so breen as someone who's kind of read through the ages we, you know, we can point to the Silver Age and say there's a lot to be a uh, value there and a good reason to start there. If you really want the history of the characters and really where they kind of all began, what kind of reader do you think is going to want to jump into that Jim Shooter era? And why would it benefit them to kind of start there? The 80s were really where comics grew up and Marvel had a head start. You know, DC started to catch up in the middle of the decade. But there's so many things, like you said, five of the greatest runs in history were all under Shooter's watch starting in the first half of the 80s. So if you're going to pick an era to start, that's that's where you would start. If, yeah. if you want to jump into Marvel and you don't know where, I would go right to that early 80s Jim Shooter era. You're going to get so many classic runs. But there's another era that stands out, Breed, certainly the 90s. And this is more, in my opinion, more of a Spider-Man, X-Men centric thing where you had these new dynamic artists that came in and just changed the game. But there for a time, they were essentially the thing that was happening in comic books people were buying those books for the art and it really revolutionized what comic books could be depending on your perspective you could argue that it brought it ushered in the era of style over substance in a lot of cases because the art was so good it was almost like the stories became secondary that was never more noticeable than when mcfarland left the amazing spider-man to doing it himself Yes, yeah, stylistically, they were beautiful books. Text-wise, maybe not as much. And certainly, Joe, mm -hmm. at this time, we're getting some of the highest-selling comic issues ever. We're talking comic books that are selling 5 million copies. Not often, but it was happening. Exactly what you were saying with you know Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, in particular, uh, Rob Liefeld, are really doing gangbusters. And if you want to check out like that era, you could start Amazing Spider-Man at like 296. Uh, that's when Todd took over on the art. And uh, y you could read that straight through 350, uh, which is the uh, Eric Larson stuff as well, but it's all by David McElhenney. And, you know, that's, we get uh, a lot of classic villains coming back. We get uh, Venom in issue mm -hmm. 300. We get a few key fights with them over those issues. We get um, you know, Mary Jane really develops more as a character. Uh, they're, they're already married, and now uh, we see what uh, their life is like together. A return of the Sinister Six. There's there's a lot of things, I think, that people associate with Spider-Man going on at this time uh, that they'd really benefit, uh, you know, from checking out. Uh, with X-Men, uh, you could start right after inferno uh really get into that uh, mark silvestri like the later end of that into the jim lee era issue 244 is first appearance of jubilee from there we get uh the revamp of, of psylocke and everything sort of building up to uh extinction agenda which is you know an event that uh people uh, to this day put on a really high pedestal uh with uh you know wonderful jim lee art and, and that, you know, builds us up to, you know, X-Men number one with, you know, Lee and Claremont, which is, you know, one of the highest selling comics. Million in the copies? Past, you know. Something like yeah, that? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. So, so you, you can, you can start there. You could start earlier and get that feel and all the, all the build up mm -hmm. to it. Um, you, you know, a, a lot of other uh, characters like you have uh, Punisher War Journal. Punisher was getting really popular. And uh, if you want early Jim Lee work, 
you get Carl Potts and, and Jim Lee doing, you know, Punisher War Journal. I think there's a lot of people who'd be interested in checking that out. Don't sell those McFarlane Hulk issues out either. That's definitely another okay. thing to go check out if you want to see something. No, like ab- absolutely. <laughs> I, I do. I do love that. Uh, that Hulk, that Peter David run. <laughs> really, you start with the Todd stuff and, mm-hmm. and just just keep going. Yeah, you'll get the essentially the greatest uh, Hulk run of all times. Now, the last kind of era in Marvel I want to talk about that I think kind of is a good starting point. I know you think this was the last great era in, in Marvel Comics breed. I say 2005 to 2010. When Casada took over in 2005, he brought back continuity and the event book. They came up with House of M into Civil War, into Secret Invasion, into Dark Reign, into Siege. It was basically a six-year plan that didn't get interrupted, so they had the time to do it. To me, it's it's a tremendous period of creativity. You you get everything from the villains being in charge, heroes fighting heroes, and it had a satisfactory payoff at the end of Siege. So everything they've been building to did have a payoff, and there's a lot of really great stuff. There, there are a lot of great places uh, to start around there. Uh, I think for X-Men fans, Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon and John Cassidy. That's a great place. Uh, you know, you have Garth Ennis's Punisher. Uh, it starts a little before that. And then, because about by 2005 or so, we're getting into, like, Punisher Max. But you can jump on around 2000, that, like, Marvel Knights era. Uh, I think Daredevil. Uh, you can start with the, the the Kevin Eastman stuff with Joe Casada, And then, you know, sort of moving forward there, you get into Bendis and Brubaker's runs. The, that's a really good era. You know, I think later into the 2000s, you get Matt Fraction's Iron Man run, which is one of the last, I think, really solid runs on that book, especially the beginning. Of course, you know, Ed Brubaker's uh, Captain America run. Last good Captain America run. So those are kind of the places that we would start personally. If you want to get into main Marvel continuity, <laughs> go back to the Silver Age. You can go to the beginning. I personally would start at the at the shooter era, you know, kind of in the early 80s. But you can certainly go to the 90s where you had the, the revolution of the artists becoming the major superstars. But 2005, 2010 is going to be more contemporary type, type stuff. There is one other like kind of I don't want to call it anomaly. There's another option out there, Joe. If perhaps the D- or the Marvel continuity is too big and there's too much history and you don't even know where to start. And you're like, oh, there's too many options. You can always go to the ultimate universe, which is a lot mm-hmm. smaller. It's more contained. There are different versions of these heroes. A lot of the same stories that are classic end up playing out in a new way within the ultimate universe but i think it is an, a wonderful alternative for a shared comic book universe that was absolutely fantastic at the beginning yeah and, and i think ultimate spider-man in particular and, and i think yeah the ultimates too um out of all the books they put out i would think those are the two that mm-hmm. are worth checking out in particular ultimate spider-man i i think uh ends up going for a while and is, is a pretty solid book for a long time. Certainly one of the things that Brian Michael Bettis is well known for, of course, Mark Miller on, on the uh, on the Ultimates themselves. But you're going like, to see a lot of stuff kind of from the movies and stuff. That's where Cap's designed, and they certainly borrowed a lot of elements. That's where you get the Samuel L. Jackson beers, version, Nick Fury, uh, within the comic books and stuff. What do you think about that Ultimate era, Breen? I know you were, you were a fan, at least for a bit first decade of the 2000s, I thought the Ultimate line was better than the regular line. It's, it's in a story arc in Ultimate Fantastic Four that we are introduced to the, what became the Marvel Zombies. I said the, the Spider-Man book, they, they came out of the gate with shock and awe. I mean, seeing Uncle Ben with a ponytail, I think he was you know, growing pot on his ledge or something. I mean, they really want to let you know, this is not your father's Spider-Man. But w- once it settled in, it was a really good book for a lot of years. Yeah, yep. so that's definitely an alternative that's out there. You want something that's a little bit tighter, more contained, and not quite as uh, overwhelming as far as the amount of comics that you're going to get into. Just as far as specific teams and characters, real quick, for me personally, if, if you're an X-Men fan, giant size X-Men, number one, mm-hmm. leading into X-Men number 94, which becomes Uncanny X-Men, is absolutely where you want to start if you like modern X-Men. For me, Spider-Man, I say just go back to Spider Amazing Spider-Man number one you know, with your classic Ditko stuff, personally. Mm-hmm. Is there any other place that you can think of, Breen, to start out with Spider-Man? If not, number one, start with 39. It was the first post-Ditko 
they they made the Peter Parker character not not more important than Spider Man. It's more important in general, and they let him grow and evolve. He got friends, he got love interests, and you really do see the formation of Peter Parker beco- slowly becoming an adult. So that's a different era. As far as the Avengers, the Avengers obviously change a lot over the years. The team's always changing. I don't think there's any one place to start personally, like where you have to start here for Avengers. I think it all men, depends on what kind of team you want there, uh, Joe. The Kurt Busiek, George Perez run uh, with everything going on. I, I'm sure there are some people out there hearing Perez's name more often, uh, are hearing people talk about the great work he's done. That is a great place to start, especially if you're interested in the Avengers. You know, maybe you're just starting out and you're too timid to go all the way back, but you still want something that has a little more of a classic feel, even in the late 90s. I think that's also a great place for for people to start. So some of the other major characters, me personally, for Thor, I say start with Simonson's run. I think it's the best run that you're going to find, and there's a lot of the modern elements really be be getting there since Simonson knows so much about Norse mythology. As far as Daredevil, obviously, it's it's the Frank Miller run. I'm not as well read up on Iron Man. I know, Joe, you're more of an Iron Man guy. Where should people start there? Once you get to, like, uh, you could start with the Demon in a Bottle era as, as well, the beginnings of uh, David McElhenney's run. Uh, you get some early, not just, you know, Bob Layton, you get some of the earliest... Uh, jrjr artwork if you really like that you can go right into the denny run and then right back into michelini coming back on the book all right breen we got one major character left where do you think people should go if they they're really big cat fan what's the perfect place to start if you really want to get into the character and a lot of the modern <clears throat> elements you know start get introduced when he graduated from tales of suspense into his own title with issue 100 so with stan and jack you you got all the classic cap villains you know the red skull was very prominent and within the first year and a half of that book you get the introduction of the falcon you get into the 70s so you get to see the establishment hero dealing with the changing times as much as they were allowed to do in comics in those days like i said stan really cared about cap and i think that was one of jack's favorites too obviously Mm -hmm. so i would start there and it's just that if that's too far back the the stern burn run starting at 247 you you really can't go wrong because you know, whether it's stern or grunwald or any of those guys you can pick a spot to start and you're going to enjoy it so there you have it folks obviously there's too much history too many characters and too many comic books to be able to nail down everything we wanted to give you just the the basics where are the best eras to start in maybe some of the places to start for these characters if there's another character that you're looking for, let us know in the comments section. We'll try to answer your question or maybe one of the other viewers as well. But thank you very much. I hope you're a comic book reader. And if we can help you find the comic book for you, that's what we're looking to do. I definitely want to say thank you very much to my good friends, Eric and Joe. And we will see you next time. If you're looking for a fantastic Avengers comic, this is essentially like the first big crossover comic book for Marvel. It's called The Avengers Defenders War. Definitely check this one out. Eric. Joe and myself talk about this and review a classic comic book that you may want to check out if you're an Avengers fan. This thing is fantastic.